Today, we continue our deep dive into the world of Black Ops 4, setting up inevitably the giant backstory in depth as we go deeper into the lore and what we may gloss over every single day while playing multiplayer. While we play these maps on a regular basis, we may never give them the time of day they deserve to examine each larger scale implication they may have and how much detail truly is hidden in plain view. While Black Ops 4 lacks a traditional campaign, the story is hidden right in front of us through multiplayer maps, specialist HQ missions, blackout easter eggs, and much more. Today we're going to be taking a look at the map Arsenal, home of the Dizzler Robotics and Engineering Company. This compound is home to many interesting facts that stem all the way back to Black Ops with a napalm strike in RCXD and bridges the gap in time while also having a few secrets of its own that showcase its rather larger scale place in the secret backstory of Black Ops 4. So let's get into it, shall we? Again, let's see how much you enjoy the series and how much you want to see more of a continuation. If you enjoy this video and or the series, be sure to drop a like down below. Let's aim for 1500 likes here on this one. And also, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing individual character backstories to set the scale for the true backstory of Black Ops 4. There's a bunch of people you might not think really belong in Black Ops 4, but are actually there and have some rather interesting backstory behind them. Many your thoughts, but that said, as for Arsenal, the Dysley Robotics compound is one that seemingly looks to be an ideal manufacturing location for anyone interested. A luxurious rooftop patio, decent break rooms, and a wealth of high tech that can be used to help the war efforts on all fronts. However, this contractor doesn't just have their introduction in the battles of Black Ops 4. In fact, Dysler has been around for far longer than many may anticipate. In an interview pre-launch with Game Informer, developer Miles Leslie of Treyarch actually detailed that this is the same contractor that was responsible for manufacturing and getting the napalm strike to the battlefields of Vietnam where the original Black Ops streak came from, 82 years earlier in the Black Ops universe than that of what we see in Black Ops 4. So, that tradition of helping wreak havoc on the battleground has not stopped in the time since as the company has also been responsible for the introduction, manufacturing of, and distribution of the RCXD from Black Ops 1 through 4, the AGR from Black Ops 2, the variations of the Lightning Strikes, the Dragonfire, the Raps, and as of recently, the Mantis in Black Ops 4, as well as the payload of Hellstorm rockets that can be seen off near the weapons testing facility. In the reception area, you can also see that all of this is in plain view, a sort of history and a museum of Dizzler's past accomplishments in the Black Ops universe. As well, we can see off in the distance a train pulling cars of helicopters, tanks, and a whole lot of whatnot, perhaps a nod at another blackout vehicle in the future, though hopefully a tank's not what we're going to be getting. It certainly wasn't the first time, though, that we've seen their work, and it certainly won't be the last time that we see it in the Black Ops universe either. But naturally, not everything can be as straightforward as it seems, right? While Dizzler seems to be a straight shooter and there really isn't all that much that can throw us for a trip that directly ties the contractor to any nefarious individuals within the story arc of Black Ops 4 and beyond, there are certainly some things that will raise some eyebrows hidden around the map. My first initial thought was to take a look at all the screens and monitors around the map, and for the most part it's actually all filler and nothing that would be of substantial use to our storyline. And while we've seen some really relevant imagery on the monitors and other maps, these mostly will be found in the security offices and are relatively normal. They're simply watching over the compound with nothing really out of place, so our search has to go a bit deeper than that. Let's head to the break room firstly of the compound where you can see simply a few tables, chairs, vending machines or two, a snack shelf, and all that fits the bill. There's a lot of things littered around this room, but only a few of importance. If you look specifically at the table with the hard hat on it, you'll find a stack of folders, and if you look closely at that folder, you'll notice that it's got the seal of the Central Intelligence Agency, or the CIA. These guys are dealing with the government on a large-scale, top-secret project. Unfortunately, the papers that protrude outside of that folder don't offer much context as to what you'll be seeing, with the only thing saying the top headline being top secret, special handling, no form. At both the top and bottom pieces sticking out, one redacted, one still visible. The only other piece of information that this can grant us is that it's signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, so whatever this documentation or contract entails, it's going straight to the top and is a project assigned from the leaders of the nation. But another interesting portion of this teaser that Dizzler is working with the CIA on a top secret project is that same exact folder can be found in the Overlook. But if you were hoping for a little bit more clues, don't get your hopes too high because it's the exact same asset model, meaning that what you see on that table is exactly what you see on the Overlook. There's no additional information, no additional papers sticking out, nothing that gives away more clues or hints toward what might be in that folder. But what is interesting is that we may be able to pick up clues elsewhere outside of that folder and 
even in the same room as the original, in that break room. If you take a look on the table nearest to the wall, and even on the counter in the kitchen area, you'll notice a tablet that has robotic schematics on it. Initially, I thought our previous introduction of robotic pieces meant the replication of Elemental War Robot 115, or as you may more commonly know him as, Reaper. But while that doesn't necessarily eliminate the possibility that they are trying to reproduce Reaper, we may actually see the setup for the next big events and militarizations in the Black Ops universe. If that schematic looks familiar to you at all, it should. That's the exact same composition of the General Purpose Infantry Unit, or GIU, also known as the Grunt or Bipedal Robot, from Black Ops 3. And if that doesn't ring a bell, you might remember them being the things that ripped you limb from limb in the opening mission of Black Ops 3's campaign and then became a huge pain in the ass afterwards in later missions. So it is quite possible that Deisler is actually the company that manufactured these on a mass scale to allow for militarization to go automated. And given the timeline, it makes sense. Black Ops 4 actually takes place before Black Ops 3, as weird as that may be to consider the titling given each game, but that's also why each specialist in Black Ops 4 has a real life and an actual backstory and sort of lore to themselves a little bit deeper. It predates the simulation that was Black Ops 3's multiplayer backstory, but that's another story for another day. Adding to the idea, though, that Deisler may be working on a top-secret project for the government to automate their military forces is a return of the tablet that we last examined on Frequency, where you had the Automaticon marketplace with the listings for VR controllers and also robotic parts. That can be found in the testing and lab facility. But what if I told you it got even weirder? Deisler isn't actually just in it for the automation of the military forces in Black Ops 4 and Black Ops 3. No, it's much deeper than that. If you've played through some of the Specialist HQ missions, you may start to understand how this next part all connects together. But if the term Project Blackout means anything to you, well, this ties into it. And it's a lot deeper than just simply giving the name Project in front of a game mode in Black Ops 4. In the center testing facility, we see various numbers of whiteboards around the area. Some of it's filled up with various doodles, random filler information such as a message saying, Kevin, the whiteboard is not for your games, HR, and some of it genuinely points to the real nature of their testing and why there's a helicopter in the middle of this facility to begin with. The key specific pieces of information that point towards this are a chart on the left side whiteboard that has the task of identify what is causing failure at this point and why the helicopter randomly fails. Along the whiteboard on the other side, you'll also see a message that mentions minimized effectiveness with prolonged exposure. Now that, that to me is the interesting part. Exposure to what exactly? Outside of one thing in particular, which we'll come back to in just a few seconds, there's nothing in Black Ops' universe apart from the changing weather patterns that would expose a helicopter. But that exposure they're referencing comes from the collapse, or as you may refer to it, the storm or the zone from Blackout. Now, it's long been considered what the zone or the collapse truly is, is something that we haven't really seen before, but by indications, it seems as if it's a variation or a differently colored wall of Nova 6. This would explain why you see the numbers, and occasionally when you're in the collapse, you see the old Nova 6 logo pop up for just a split second in your field of view. What makes this even more curious to me is that if you were to take a look at any of the shipping crates still packed away near the hangar in a back spawn, there are several instances in which you can visibly see crates marked with the number 6. Now, while admittedly, it isn't the classic Nova 6 logo or any known variation of it, and surely it could be a rather interesting placeholder stamp, it's curious that the one known factor that is consistent with the collapse and the symbology inside of it also happens to be present on the crates at a facility where they're testing why helicopters fail in the collapse of Blackout. Now, while they don't necessarily have to be related, the factors are, to me, too close of puzzle pieces not to fit in some way. So perhaps those crates are filled with Nova 6, and they're testing that on the helicopters to see why exactly it fails in the collapse. Now, it's only safe to assume at this point when considering this that Deisler may be embedded with the governments of the world for sure, but it also seems like they're dealing with Dr. Savannah Meyer and, as we mentioned before, Raul Menendez and a few others that may shock you later on down the line as we continue to piece this all together. But if you really want to get crazy, it doesn't end there. Fair warning, this next portion doesn't exactly guarantee anything from here on out, and we're taking some educated guesses as there's currently nothing else that really ties these theories down that we can cross-reference and be like, this is definitive, but if you also look in the stress testing facility, there'll be multiple instances of the MPD blueprint in plain view. And yes, I'm talking about the MPD from Moon Zombies in Black Ops and later in Zombies Chronicles. Now, this in particular perplexes me greatly because one, it could simply be an Easter egg of fan service, something like, hey, did you catch that? What a wild addition to the map. Or it could actually have some story implications. 
We know that based off of how everything is working, Black Ops 4 looks to seamlessly connect every aspect of the Black Ops universe and tie it all together. No longer will Zombies have its own world and universe, Campaign isn't its own world anymore, and MP isn't its own world either. They're all in one giant universe, and with Blackout, it tries to add even more validity to that. So, a theory that I have is that maybe this MPD isn't exactly the original blueprint, hence why there's still German text on it in a contractor's compound located in Texas of all places. Instead, I think this may be an unearthed copy where Deisler may actually be instead looking to recreate the MPD in some capacity. If they had attempted and perhaps they were even successful, perhaps this is on Savannah Meyer's behalf for Project Blackout. This could ultimately explain why zombies randomly show up in Blackout, and this could also explain the mashup of classic maps all in one location or Blackout. It's teleporting each of them into the drop zone of Blackout. Otherwise, well, how else would a mashup of such diverse history the Black Ops locale all end up in one place together? Anyways though, like I mentioned, that's just a theory and there's no definitive proof, but Rather interesting thought, don't you think? And one final kind of brain teaser that got me was that I don't think this will amount to anything, but if you go into the vents within Arsenal and you take a look at either of the sides where you can actually stand up, you'll notice that there is a graded bottom to that, and underneath that you can see into what is a server room it looks like. And my initial thought, again, I don't think this is actually now trying to think about it logically, but my initial thought was that looks really similar to the server room that Jessica ended up meeting up with Donnie, Rue, and Walsh, and all the other specialists before they mounted their counterattack, presumably, against Savannah Meyer. Talk about hiding in plain view if that's the case, but again, I don't know if that will amount to anything, but something that also kind of caught my interest, and maybe you can theorize a little bit further down in the comments. But that is where we're going to wrap it up. Arsenal doesn't necessarily have, again, as many nefarious direct ties, but there are definitely some things that are very curious and will raise your eyebrows if you really start to think about it. So, that said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about the testing of the helicopters for Blackout? What do you think about the true intentions of the NPD? Why do you think that blueprint's there? Whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4 and, of course, the secret history of each map. And ultimately, once we get there, the entire backstory completely deciphered for you guys. But that said, if you want to stay up to date with all that kind of stuff, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube, where I can live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever that is, link in the description below. But Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.